Hi, I'm Dr. Jeff Glad, Chief Medical Officer of Fullscript, the leading healthcare platform for providers to prescribe healthcare's best supplements, drive better patient outcomes, and scale practice growth with unparalleled efficiency. As a healthcare provider, I know that finding time to stay up to date on the latest trends and research in modern medicine can be a daunting task. That's why I'm excited to share a cutting edge supplement course our team of medical experts worked on in collaboration with A4M and several industry experts designed to help you navigate supplements and make more informed clinical decisions. Throughout the 16 hours of content, we'll give you the clinical context you'll need to confidently recommend supplements to your patients. The A4M Supplement Certification course is the perfect starting point or clinical update for optimizing your supplement treatment plans to ensure the best possible outcomes for your patients. Go to www.a4m.com slash supplement dash certification dash course dot html and use the promo code podcast20 at checkout to get a 20% discount. Enroll today and elevate your whole person care. Welcome to Redefining Medicine, an intimate and personalized program that illustrates a different side of the practice of medicine. Our in-depth conversations will focus on the physicians and practitioners who are redefining medicine through their integrative, functional, and holistic approach to health and well-being. Our host for Redefining Medicine is Dr. Erica Schwartz. For more than 20 years, Dr. Erica has been at the forefront of advanced patient care, taking the best from conventional and integrative medicine and applying them to prevent disease. Dr. Erica is a distinguished A4M faculty member in disciplines ranging from hormone therapy, peptide therapy, and IV nutritional support. Welcome to Redefining Medicine. I have the pleasure of interviewing Dr. Ian White today, who just stepped off the stage. And uh, Dr. White, what did you tell us about? What did you talk about today? Well, today I had the pleasure of addressing um, a very inquisitive audience, um, uh, which is always very fun. We had a lot of questions. And I talked about how birth tissue can be leveraged for longevity and regenerative uh, purposes. Because um, what we found in our own research is that pregnancy um, harbors a, a, a miraculous tissue. Uh, and that's the placenta. Mm -hmm. And the placenta comes with an umbilical cord and amniotic fluid. And in these tissues are growth factors and exosomes that the body can utilize to help heal itself. And so uh, over the past few decades, medicine has really started to pay attention to these kinds of tissues. And our company, Neobiosis, in the last three years, has really pioneered ways to purify these products and then get them uh, to patients that actually can benefit from them. We donate a lot of product. Um, we had an IND recently approved by the FDA for a clinical trial. So we're really trying to demonstrate how these products work and how they can be utilized in the clinic on a daily basis for all kinds of um, diseases, degenerative, and also uh, injuries. So when you're talking about regenerative medicine and you're talking about the products that your company, Neobiosis, is using, how is that different than... Allopath, uh, allergenic, allergenic um, products or endogenous products. Yeah. How? Or what's the difference? Well, so this industry really got started with allergenic products, mm -hmm. taking our own tissues, rendering them in a lab, and then reintroducing them. Mm -hmm. um, the problem there is that, of course, you're using tissue that's coming from the patient's own source. Um, if it's not fixing the body in an endogenous way, how is it going to fix it when you take it out, shake it around, and put it back? Um, so it doesn't really work um, as effectively as we would like. Um, the way that it does work really is as an irritant. So when you take out bone marrow or you take out adipose and you render it and then you put it back into an injury, what that does is that it elicits an immune response. And when you elicit an immune response, the way the body typically works in response to injury is that you get inflammation and then you get on the backside regeneration. So what they, the physicians and the providers hope to do with those products is elicit that immune response to benefit them from the backside of the response, which is the regenerative response. But of course, 
if you're 40, 50, 60 year, year old, then those tissues are going to be 40, 50, 60 years old. And it's relying on a 40, 50, 60 year old immune system to do the work, to do all the heavy lifting. So the way our products differ is that we take advantage of pregnancy. Um, and as you know, you know, pregnant tissues are robust in growth factors and exosomes that can instruct the body how to heal. And so rather than taking tissue that exists already in the body, we take tissue from a neonatal source. So um, a healthy baby, um, the baby's been, um, was delivered by cesarean section, and we're able to take that waste, that placental tissue, the amniotic fluid, we render it in, a, in our lab laboratory, and we're able to administer it in a way that then teaches the body how to repair itself. And not only do we teach the body how to repair itself, but we give it the raw materials, the raw resources that it otherwise wouldn't have. Because we get wrinkly and we get gray because we lose all those resources. Right. And the perinatal tissues, the birth tissues, are replete with those. They're full of these signals that tell the body how to repair, how to regenerate, and they're able to utilize them from a third-party unrelated individual. So it's Explain magical. that to us. Explain how unrelated yeah. is okay. Yeah. So because we're all taught in allopathic medicine about that there is a problem if it's not... If it's not matched. It's not matched. Well, the good thing is that birth tissue is um, immunoevasive. So it's not immunoprivileged. It doesn't completely avoid the immune system, but it is immunoevasive, which means that it doesn't elicit a massive immune response. When it doesn't uh, elicit a massive immune response, what it can do is signal to your cells in the short period of time that it's available before it's removed by the immune system. And in that time, all of the exosomes that are present find their target cells, and they actually merge with them. The exosomes merge with your target cells, the cells in your body that are perhaps inflamed. They release their cargo into the cell, and then the uh, immune system isn't an issue. It's now hidden from the immune system because it's inside the cell. So um, that's really how it works. It works by evading the immune system for a short amount of time in order to do the work it needs to do before it's then cleared by the, the, the remainder of the immune system. That sounds remarkable. <laughs> and... Tell me about how you got to focus on regenerative medicine, because I know you are the chair of the regenerative medicine. I'm the vice president vice of the American president. College of Regenerative Medicine. So yeah. talk, how did you get into it? Well, I've been studying regenerative medicine for over 20 years now. Um, it seems crazy to think about it, but it's been a long time. Um, I was originally interested in parasites. So I have a master's degree in parasitology. Interesting. And I was interested in how parasites interact with the immune system. Right. How do they evade the immune system? And one of the things we learned many years ago, um, which is now more popular, is this idea of exosomes. Mm -hmm. So parasites use exosomes to modulate the immune system so they can evade the immune system and infect um, our body. Mm -hmm. We didn't know they were called exosomes at the time. We didn't know what they were, but we knew that parasites liberated something that affected the host immune system. And so I really got interested in studying that, and that led me to study immune cells, to, to study stem cells, and then how stem cells contribute to regenerative medicine, and then ultimately aging. And so my main focus right now is understanding the evolution of aging, why we evolved aging, and what kind of countermeasures we could perhaps develop looking at birth tissue. And that was sort of the focus of my presentation today, is what is special about the birthing process, and what can we learn from that to then design brand new countermeasures to actually treat the aging process and perhaps even reverse aging. So give me an example, like how do we... Well, right now we're using um, purified amniotic fluid as a cosmetic. Mm -hmm. um, what's fascinating, and a lot of people don't know, is that um, amniotic fluid and the Wharton's jelly that's in the umbilical cord are incredibly high in hyaluronic acid. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you probably hear about hyaluronic acid all the time, you're right. in the aesthetics um, industry, but that hyaluronic acid from all those products are derived from animals. It's from a rooster comb. Interesting. So it's not a human source. Mm -hmm. So our product is the first product on the market as a cosmetic that has human-derived hyaluronic acid, and that's from the birth tissue. And so we're able to use those tissues to enhance the treatments that aesthetic physicians use. Maybe it's laser ablation or maybe it's microneedling. So those treatments, they can be enhanced. The results can be enhanced by providing the raw materials and the hyaluronic acid and everything that's in the birth tissue to get much better um, results. And in fact, um, these products can be used clinically as well. And we're seeing a lot of um, studies that are IRB approved where we're able to take burns, for example, or in the case of a recent study, uh, we had a, a recalcitrant um, diabetic wound that wasn't healing with traditional um, 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 standard of care. 
and we were able to apply amniotic fluid to this uh, uh, um, diabetic wound. And over the course of three months, instead of getting worse like it was doing before, it actually resolved and the skin was baby soft skin with no scar, no scar whatsoever. Um, same thing with the firework accident that we were able to treat. Um, the patient was in 10 out of 10 pain with third degree burns. Uh, the prognosis was two to three months recovery. Um, we were able to donate uh, tissue and do a study with her where instead of two to three months recovery and the skin grafting, she was able to heal within six days. And this is a study that we've been able to uh, publish. We were able to get her pain down from 10 out of 10 to two out of 10 within 30 minutes, uh, get her off of opioids, which is critical because you know, we have this major opioid crisis in right. the United States right now. So anything we can do uh, from a natural perspective to reduce pain um, is going to be a positive. And um, birth tissue like amniotic fluid is an incredible analgesic. Um, what about the availability of the amniotic fluid, the availability of the... Yeah, so as a cosmetic, we have a company called Lilium, and we are able to do business through Lilium for the cosmetic. Again, it's a supplement to mm -hmm. um, the types of treatments that you might see at a, a med spa, perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, but we also have an IND approved by the FDA now, so that we're able to go into a clinical trial for post-COVID syndrome. So post-COVID syndrome has a lot of different uh, symptoms, and we're able to pick out a few of those symptoms and demonstrate um, scientifically and rigorously that purified amniotic fluid is able to modulate the inflammation associated with the post-COVID syndrome. So we bring down that inflammation, and then we're able to promote tissue repair. So what are the symptoms? For the post-COVID syndrome. The post so they, it's, there's, a, there's a whole um, gamut of, of symptoms ranging from um, uh, neurological issues, um, joint pain, uh, your brain fog is a, is a huge one, um, eyesight failure, hair loss. You know, there are a lot of different symptoms associated with it. But what's fascinating is that for, for years, decades, patients have been suffering from post-viral syndromes um, mm -hmm. and nobody believes them. Nobody believes mm -hmm. they're experiencing this chronic pain. Uh, nobody uh, believes they're experiencing chronic, chronic brain fatigue fog or, or chronic, chronic fatigue, fatigue syndrome. Chronic. It's all related to a, a post-viral infection. Mm -hmm. um, only now with COVID are we really recognizing that it's a real phenomenon and people that were dismissed previously are now getting a voice. Um, and so over 300 million people have been diagnosed with post-COVID syndrome right now. If we're able to treat them, perhaps we're able to treat some of these other post-viral symptom patients as well, where um, they've gone their entire lives um, not only not being believed, but with no treatments available to them. So it's interesting because we're treating a lot of them with LDN, low-dose yep. naltrexone, and they seem to be doing well, but compared to... Well, so what you're saying. Uh, COVID really is uh, a disease associated with aging. Right. And the tissues that we generate from the birth tissue, what the idea behind that is that the tissues signal to the body to, tr to teach it to be young again. Mm -hmm. So if COVID is a, a disease of older people, we don't really see it in, in younger individuals. Mm -hmm. And we can trick the body into thinking that it's younger by receiving all those young signals. We can essentially roll back the symptoms of the COVID because... Um, the, all of the age-associated degeneration has now been reversed. So you treat them systemically? Yeah. How, so our clinical trial um, IND that was approved yeah. is a, a dose escalation assay. So we start at a low dose and we go up to 10 cc's IV in order to see the, the effects. And how often do you do it? Um, I believe it's once every three weeks. They will receive, I think, f up to four doses. Four doses. Yeah. And the results you have? We, have, so we haven't actually started recruiting yet. So the data that we generated in order to get the approval was um, partially in um, vitro, partially in vivo, and some clinical data as well. And that clinical data was generated offshore so that we could actually do the studies. Right. Um, but it was very, very encouraging, and that's why the FDA approved our clinical trial. So once we start recruiting, we're actually raising capital right now to pay for the clinical trial because those things are expensive. Yeah. And if we can demonstrate the efficacy uh, and the safety, we can move to the next phase of the clinical trial and hopefully move it through to commercialization, which is then going to be hopefully good for everybody because we'll be able to turn a profit, but then also we'll be able to bring it to the, um, to the masses. To, to the masses. Yeah. Everybody, yeah. yeah. Exactly. I think the information is amazing. I think the future is all yours, really. There's no doubt in my mind. This is definitely the future of medicine. This is the future of medicine. And I'm so excited to be able to see you, to listen to you today. 
And if people want to know more about it, your company's name is Neobiosis. The company's Neobiosis. And, um, and we have a spin-off company for the cosmetics, which is Lilium. And you can find information on myliliumlife.com. And also, if anybody's just generally interested in regenerative medicine, I'm uh, also the vice president of the American College of Regenerative Medicine. And we have a lot of resources on our website. And um, it's very inexpensive to, be, to become a member. And I'm sorry, I'd certainly encourage everybody to become a member. <laughs> but there's a lot of free resources there too. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Dr. All right. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me.